on Monday morning, to start my week, I have a routine that I like to follow every single week. After breakfast and personal time in God's Word, I pull out that mini white legal pad that I showed the kids. You kind of heard this already, but I'm going to say it again. And on that white legal pad on the very top, I take a Sharpie and I write in big bold letters this week and I put a fun little squiggly line underneath it or whatever I want to write that week. And then underneath it, I write down literally everything I need to do and that might overwhelm some of you to see all that. Uh, But for me, it actually helps. I write down all the emails I have to send. I write down all the people I get to visit with, grab coffee with that week. I write down the Bible classes, the, the sermon stuff, everything I need to do for the upcoming Sunday service. I, I write down everything for the week. It might stress some of you out, but it helps me organize everything for the week and plan out what I need to do. It helps me plan my time so I can make the most use of my time and do what I need to do. And I'm sure by the smirks and kind of nods when I said it would stress some of you out, I'm sure not all of you do that. But maybe you start your week by planning at least a little bit, right? You've got to plan something so you're not just jumping into the week going, well, what's happening in two minutes because I have no clue? Or what am I supposed to do at work this week because I have no clue? You have to plan something, right? And so at some, to some degree, we all plan so we can use our time efficiently. We want to be able to do what we need to do. We, want to, we have to plan our time. Today, as we continue talking about the gift of time that God has given us, God is going to help us think about how we plan our time. And it's kind of a, th- a three-part sermon this morning. God asks that as you plan your time, you plan your time to serve, you plan your time to be served, and you plan your time to be healed. So, Three-part sermon, talk about each part for a couple minutes this morning. We'll start in Mark chapter 1. If you want to follow along, pages 10 and 11, you're welcome to. Start with the first two verses again. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So if you back up a few verses before these verses, you'll find out it's the Sabbath day. It is the day to go to worship. And so Jesus and these four disciples, they were at the synagogue, they were worshiping God. And what happened at the synagogue that day? A demon-possessed man showed up to church. And so Jesus did what Jesus did. And he drove out the demon from the man in front of everyone at the synagogue that day. And then the five of them went to Simon Peter's home where his mother-in-law was. And the reason they did that was because in that day it was customary to go to the home where you were staying, whether it was yours or someone else's, and have a special Sabbath meal. Well, they reached the home and Peter found out his mother-in-law was sick. So sick she had a fever and she was in bed. And you might think, well, that, that's not too bad. You can recover from that. In that day, that was actually really, really bad to have a fever so bad it landed you in bed. You probably wouldn't survive very long. And so what does Peter immediately do? He tells Jesus. And Mark records what happens next so simply and tenderly. He says, so he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her. Just like that. Something that had Peter's mother-in-law laid in bed with a fever, sweating, probably not very responsive, was gone. Like it never had happened. Like Jesus had just driven out a demon from a random stranger in the synagogue, and now he drove out a fever from Peter's mother-in-law. Miracle after miracle. And yet the part I want you to pay attention to this morning is what happens next. What does Peter's mother-in-law do after she was healed? 
She, she doesn't jump around for joy and start screaming, hooting and hollering, throwing a party. She doesn't run to go see her friends now that she's no longer contagious. She doesn't even leave the house. It says, she began to wait on them right after she was healed. Her first thought was, where are the clean glasses so I can get them something to drink? What food do I have in the home so I can prepare a special Sabbath meal for them? As soon as she was healed, her first thought, she planned to use her time to serve. And that is one of the main reasons God gives us time. He asks you this morning to plan to use your time to serve others and to serve him. Pretend for a moment that you are laid up in the hospital with some medical problem. You pick your your list of problems, you you pick the one you want to have today, okay? You're in the hospital, you're in bed, and I come to visit you. And I ask... Why do you want to get better? And take me seriously, okay? Don't just answer sarcastically like, well, what do you think? I'm laying here. No, be serious. If, if I asked you, why do you want to get better, what would be your answer? Maybe you'd answer something like, well, I want to get better so I, don't, so I can live without pain. I want to get better so I can go on that vacation or go on that hike. I want to get better so I can spend time with my family because I've been taking that for granted lately. Those are all very valid reasons why you might want to get better. God has one he wants you to add to that list this morning. And not even just in the middle of the list, but on the top. I want to get better so I can use my time, I can plan to use my time to serve. I want to get better so I can plan to use my time to serve that coworker who's, who's depressed and lonely all the time. I want to plan to use my time, I want to get better so I can plan to use my time to love my family even if they don't always love me. I want to get better so I can plan to use my time to, to serve my neighbor who always seems afraid and and just very nervous about what's going on in the world around them. I want to get better so I can plan to use my time to serve at church and be a light for God in this world. And, And that's our first point for this morning. God asks that as you plan your time, you plan your time to serve. Verses 32 and to... Verses 32 through verse 34. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Can you imagine this? Peter, or Jesus had just driven out a de- uh, the fever from Peter's mother-in-law. And now she's in the home preparing a meal. She's serving them and all of a sudden there's a knock at the door. Peter goes to the door and he answers the door and he says, Jesus, it's for you. And from somewhere in the home, Jesus says, well, who is it? The whole town. And in that day, you could imagine a couple hundred people. Can you imagine the whole town showing up to your home after dark? Why? Why did they all show up and why at night? Well, think about what day is it or what day was it. It was the Sabbath. It was the Sabbath day. And in in the Jewish world, you have a maximum number of miles you can put on your feet that day. You can only travel from your home to the synagogue and back. Can't go anywhere else or any further. 
that entire town was filled with good Jews. So they already used the miles they were allowed that day. And what did they see when they went to the synagogue? Something they didn't see every Sabbath. Jesus drove out a demon from a random stranger. And it appears that from their reaction, from showing up in the middle of the night, that many of them saw this and went home thinking something like this. You know, he helped that guy with his problems. I wonder if he could help me with mine. Or he helped that guy with his problems. I wonder if he could help my relative with theirs. But their curiosity had to wait. It was the Sabbath. They couldn't go find out. And in the Jewish world, a day starts at night. So they had to wait until the sun went down and the new day began in order to go find Jesus. And they weren't about to wait till the morning in the sunlight. No, they wanted to know now. And so they all, the whole town, showed up with their problems, hoping Jesus would serve them, hoping Jesus would help them. And what does he do? He doesn't turn them away. He serves them. They were there to be served and Jesus was there to serve. He healed their diseases and he drove out even more demons. And Jesus wants to serve you too. He asks that as you plan your time, you plan your time to be served by him. He wants to do things for you. When you plan your week and you start to see the list and you are loaded down with a week's worth of worry, God asks that as you plan your time, you plan your time to be served and watch as he carries you through another week of his grace. When the stresses of life start to weigh you down and you're wondering, how am I going to get through this? I I can't even swim. Yes, that you plan your time to be served by him and be ready to experience the rest that he promises to give and he will give. And when the pain comes, when the medical problem arises, when pain is inflicted upon you by someone else, He asks that as you plan your time, you plan your time to be served by him and be ready to be healed in his way. And that's our second point for today. That God asks that as you plan your time, in addition to serving, plan your time to be served. To be served by God. And then verse 35 Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. This is arguably the most important point in this entire account this morning. So don't miss it. Jesus was up until who knows what hour of the night healing people. I mean, they didn't show up until dark, You don't know what time of year it was, so it could have been pretty late. And there were probably a couple hundred people with problems that needed help, that needed him to serve them. He was up until who knows when, and if there was ever a reason to sleep in the next day, he had it. What does he do? Early in the morning, while still dark, so before the sun even began to rise, he left. He went off to talk to his father. He went off to pray. And what did he pray about? Mark doesn't say, but what did Jesus always pray about? What was always on his heart and mind? Like, and you can see it by everything he did. You? healing you. Spiritually healing you. What was on his heart and mind all the time was the cross where he would go to suffer and die to free you from sin, death, hell, and Satan. See, you and I, we were born broken. 
And you know what, it like, you know what it's like to feel broken. You, you feel the effects of living in a broken and sin-filled world every day. You know the mistakes and regrets that you have, the sins you've committed. And that's what Jesus prayed about. He prayed about how to serve you, how to heal you. And he went all the way to the cross and he did just that. He eternally healed you. He spiritually healed you. He saved you from all your mis- sins, all your mistakes, regrets. They've been gone. They were gone. Removed completely when he died on the cross. For you. And on Easter he rose. He rose and therefore heaven is your eternal home. You have been spiritually and eternally healed. And that's our third and final point for today. In addition to planning your time to serve, to be served, God also asks that as you plan your time, you plan your time to be healed. To be spiritually healed, to be eternally healed. And you do that by consistently planning your time to be in the Word. You plan your time to be in church like you are right now, fantastic. You plan your time to be in the Word in Bible class. What's an extra hour each week? where you're healed from from something nothing else can heal you from. You plan your time to be in the Word on your own. Plan your time to be in the Word, just being with fellow Christians, where they give you that forgiveness on behalf of God. They can do that as Christians. God asks that as you plan your time, you plan your time to be healed in His Word, because ultimately that's what Jesus came to do. And He did do it. He did it when He died on the cross for you. He did it through how he planned and used his time to serve you and to heal you. Remember that white legal pad I showed the kids and that I told you about at the beginning? I know not all of you plan your weeks this way and I know it would stress many of you out, but I'm going to ask you right now to mentally pull out a white legal pad, picture a white piece of paper. And on the top, in big, bold, sharpie letters, write the words, this week, with a squiggly line underneath it. Skip the first three lines. Leave those three lines blank for a moment. And now start thinking about what you have to do this week. I'm not trying to stress you out. But what do you have going on this week? The meetings, the people, the doctor's appointments, the coffee, the stuff at work, what... What do you have to plan your week around, your time around this week? There's a lot. Go back to those three lines I had you leave blank for a moment. Now let's plan our time the way God talked about today. Plan your time to serve. What are some ways you're going to, to serve others? Just, just to serve them, just to love them. Whether they're people at work people at home, friends. Then think about how you're going to plan your time to be served by God. What, what are the stresses, the worries, the fears you have? Plan your time to be served by God and take, him, take those things to him in prayer and watch as he serves you. And then finally, think about how to plan to use your time to be healed. When are you going to be in the Word this next week? When are you going to go to God in prayer? How are you going to plan to use your time this week to serve, be served, and to be healed? God asks that we do that. To do that with joy and thanks in our hearts as we think about how he used his time. How did he use his time? Throughout his life, he planned and used his time to serve you, to heal you, and he did. And so, dear Christians, your friends, God bless as you plan to use your time this week to serve, be served, and to be healed. Amen.